Here's the thing about Hitler. He really wanted to bomb Great Britain, but he couldn't because Great Britain is an island and every time he got too close, he got shot. He quickly realized he needed to find a way to bomb England from afar. You know, like a coward. So he started developing a rocket. Well, they didn't call it a rocket at the time. They called it Vengeance Weapon, or in the native German, Vergeltungswaffe. I know, it just rolls out of the tongue. The first version of the Vengeance Weapon used a pulse jet engine, and it was as effective as a gorilla trying to do crochet. It missed a lot, is what I mean. So the German jumped straight into the second version, the V-2 rocket, a proper rocket that became the first intercontinental missile, or at least a successful one. This rocket, just like modern rockets, used the fuel and oxidizer mixture to generate thrust, and just like in modern rockets, it required very powerful pumps to inject these components into the combustion chamber. And here was the problem, because this was 1944, and they needed to find a way to rotate the pumps really, really fast. So, they turned to the technology at hand. Steam turbines. So, follow me on this. Steam turbines require high-pressure steam, and to get high-pressure steam, at the time, they normally used boilers, like the ones used in steam engines. Now, boilers tend to be big, heavy, and not at all compatible with rocket engines. So to solve this problem, they came up with a very weird and interesting solution. A chemical reaction. You're probably familiar with the kids' experiment called elephant's toothpaste, in which you use yeast and hydrogen peroxide to create foam. The reason why you get foam is because of the steam and oxygen that are created by decomposing the hydrogen peroxide. The Nazis took this to the extreme and used very high concentration hydrogen peroxide and potassium permanganate, which they mixed to get insanely high pressure steam. The problem with this approach is, because you're mixing two liquids, both get discarded through the exhaust, which is neither optimal or efficient. Trust me, I know. Me being me, I wanted to improve on this. And to be honest, I think I just found the right way to do it. Okay, so this is a catalytic converter for a, a bike, a scooter. And normally these, these catalytic converters, they're basically a matrix that has a lot of uh, precious metals like silver or platinum. And silver or platinum are very good at decomposing hydrogen peroxide. So let's test this out to see if it has a better result than my own uh, catalyst. Yeah, let's give it a... Three, two, one. Look at that. Uh, I know this looks scary, but uh, this is decomposing into water vapor and oxygen, which uh, both of them are not dangerous. You can literally... S yeah, it smells like nothing. So I have my steam. What I need now is a turbine, and I already have a design in mind. I am thinking of using a very simple design with cleverly tilted blades. As the steam comes in, it heats the blades and pushes them like in a water wheel. That's what we call an impulse turbine. But then, as the steam slides tangentially off the blades, it acts as a microjet engine, creating thrust, giving the rotor even more rotation. That's what we call a reaction turbine. This hybrid turbine seems the best of both worlds, but to make sure it works, I need a prototype. And what better way to get a prototype than 3D printing? Okie dokie. So now we possess the turbine, uh, it's all assembled. Uh, it seems to be spinning pretty freely, smoothly. I'm gonna give it a test with about two bars. Yeah, let's connect the things. Three, two, one. Nice. It's going pretty well with just two bars. Let me try it with, uh, what about? Six bars? Four bars. Let's try it with four bars first. Test with four bars now. Three, two, one. The net is coming out. Can you see that? 
That's the amount of speed it's generating. It's pretty cool. So as you can see, the inlet is here, the nozzle is here, it's projecting into the blades and making the turbine spin. I want to try this with eight bars, but I'm a little bit scared, so I'm going to go get protection glasses because this is spinning really, really fast. I'm going to start slowly because I'm pretty sure this is going to explode. Okay, fire away, Joel. I'm going to try not to lose fingers. <laughs> Jesus. That's, that's scary. I can't do it more than two seconds. This is going to explode for sure. Look, I'm not bragging or anything. Yes, I am. But my design is working pretty well. With compressed air. If I'm going to use steam, I need to make this in metal. And maybe I should make it bigger. And more powerful. Incapable of moving the world! Sorry, I lost myself there for a second. Anyway, um, I think I'm going to use my CNC machine to cut the parts in aluminium for me. I have almost zero experience with it, so that should be fun. Jesus. <laughs> okay, you can come out. It's done, it's completely done. Look at this big ass turbine. I mean, it just took about 18 hours and 30 end mills that I broke, but uh, it's finished. <laughs> now I just need uh, to machine more aluminium. But uh, the rest of the parts are easy. This one was the hard one and it's done. Almost there, let's keep moving. That's insane. I mean, the worst part of it is if I can get if I can get high pressure steam, which is not eight bars, it's like sixty bars. I think this is gonna explode. It is insane. But enough with the compressed air test. I need me some steam. So here's the plan. I'm gonna machine some lead in aluminium and use an acrylic tube to fit my catalytic converters. All together should give me a good decomposing chamber. Using the same concept, I'm gonna assemble a very well sealed tank to hold my 50% hydrogen peroxide. So this is a water pump used in gardens. It's uh, activated with a drill. It's pretty simple, but uh, it works with high pressure and is pretty uh, well sealed. So I'm gonna use it to pump the peroxide. The general idea here is I fill this tank with peroxide and between the catalyzer and the tank of peroxide, we have the pump and the one-way valve. So this keeps the peroxide uh, from going into the catalyzer until I spin uh, the pump, push the peroxide into the catalyzer, which will decompose into steam and oxygen, go into the turbine and make the turbine spin. If nothing leaks, this should work perfectly. Let's see if this actually happens. But first I need to mount this into uh, wood. Yeah, but it's not a, 
It's not catalyzing completely. There's a lot of leftover here. Actual liquid uh, hydrogen peroxide is going into the turbine, which is not good. Let's try another one. I'm gonna put a little bit more this time. I can't believe this is actually working. I know what you're thinking. Yeah, sure, the turbine is spinning pretty quickly with the steam, but is it producing a lot of power? Well, I did some tests with compressed air at 8 bar, and I used electric motors as generators. And the quick answer is... no. I didn't see a lot of power being generated, and with the load of the motor, the turbine wasn't really spinning that fast. Nonetheless, I still think it's a good concept to work on but I need to improve the turbine and the catalyzer. With the right design, I'm pretty sure this will be able to generate enough power to move something. I don't know, like a skateboard. Could you imagine a steampunk, steam-powered skateboard? How cool is that? I'm counting on you guys to give me a little bit of help, and for that I'm making the 3D models for the turbines available in the description of the video. Tweak it, change it and improve it. Please, help me. If you want to help but you don't have a 3D printer, well, you're in luck, because I'm giving one away. On my last video I gave away a 3D printer to the most liked comment suggesting a theme for a future video. The winner was Jay Lee, and he suggested that I could do a RC rocket. Well, I don't know if I'm able to do it, but I'm gonna try. If you also want to win a 3D printer, all you need to do is subscribe to the channel, leave a like on this video, and post a comment suggesting a theme for a future video. The most liked comment will receive a brand new 3D printer. Well. Um, this is everything for today. Thank you so much for watching, and remember, tomatoes are disgusting. See ya!